cataractcoach.com. We're watching a resident doing a cataract surgery. And this is at the beginning of their senior year, only about 30 cataracts under their belt. And this resident's going to attempt this dense cataract. It's pretty brunescent. Tripan blue dye is being put in the eye. Now we'll show the video unedited, but we have increased the speed of the video to three times. So this surgery unedited at real time was 30 minutes, and now it's going to be sped up, so it's going to be only about 10 minutes. That's so we can get to the learning points across without spending too much time. So you can see the capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. Now a temporal phaco incision is being created with the keratome. That looks like a really nice tunnel length. I like the architecture of that incision. That looks great. And a capsorexis is going to be made now. Now, you can tell again this resident used a cohesive viscoelastic, which is coming out of the eye already. The capsorexis started here with a cystotome. It's going to be switched over to a forceps next. The key in a dense brunescent cataract is make a big rexus. Because if the capsorexis is big, it's going to be easier to access this very dense nucleus. This is a case where I'd tell you at least a 5 millimeter capsorexis. 5.5 is better. Even I don't mind a 6 or even 6.5 millimeter capsorexis. Remember, if the rexus is bigger than the optic, it's okay. The capsule will shrink wrap down and it will end up overlapping the optic anyway in the post-op period. So here they're using a special hooked cannula to do hydrodissection, rotate the nucleus. Again, this is a dense nucleus, and that's a relatively small capsorexis. It's probably a four and a half millimeter capsorexis. So let's see what technique we're going to use here. Faco probes going in the eye. It looks like the bevel's being oriented up. And a groove being made down the middle here. So it looks like some sort of grooving technique. We're going to crack the nucleus, I suppose, next. The grooves are being made. Use sufficient phaco power here. Again, my one bit of advice is, looks like the cohesive viscoelastic was used at the beginning of the case. That's not going to provide much corneal protection during surgery. So I would have recoated the endothelium with a dispersive viscoelastic prior to putting the phaco probe in the eye. But a nice groove is being made here. That looks great. Now, you got to achieve a sufficient depth of this groove. Oh, nice rotation. So it looks like a divide and conquer technique is going to be done. Grooving this plus sign or cross sign in the uh, lens with the phaco probe. So chopper being used like in the left hand to stabilize things. I'd encourage the groove to be made also sub-incisionally, not just in that nasal area, but also under the phaco probe. Withdraw the probe and aim it more downward. Or simply do this half groove and then rotate and then continue. So there's more rotation and looks like that's what's going to happen. So continuing the initial groove. And then I bet we're going to rotate this nucleus counterclockwise. There it is to continue this groove. Now with a brunescent or dense cataract, the posterior aspect of the lens is dense and fibrous. There's almost a fibrous plate there, a leathery plate, that's going to prevent this nucleus from really splitting or cracking into pieces. So this groove for a normal degree of cataract or, or normal degree of nuclear sclerosis would be fine. But in a brunescent or dense lens like this, this groove's not going to be good enough. Let's see what happens. Putting the instruments in the groove, trying to split it apart. Ah, well, there is a good split. I got proved wrong right there. That looks great. But it didn't propagate through. You see what I mean? So rotating it the other way. A little more grooving. Try another split, and you can see it does split, but it's still attached posteriorly. There's that plate, that fibrous plate on the posterior aspect of the lens. That's a good split. It looks like two halves now. I commend the resident for a job well done there. Let's groove again, see if we can make one of the hemi-nucleus pieces into two quarters, and kind of. 
Again, great technique, good surgeon here, especially considering the level of training. But this is just a very fibrous lens. Ah, there was a nice split. So now we've got one quarter free. Go to high vacuum settings, higher flow settings. Let's see if we can bring that one piece up through the Rexus. Buzz into it, high vacuum. Doesn't look like it's coming out of the bag. It may, there it is. I take that back, it comes out of the bag. I'm gonna put more energy into it, take this first quadrant down. Now, once one quadrant is down, it really helps because there's more working room within the capsule bag. Here comes the second quadrant, buzzing into it, bringing it up. Here's actually another little sub chop looks like. That looks great. Again, very nice job. Uh, considering the level of training, again, only 30 cases or so under this doctor's belt. There's a recoat of viscoelastic. I like that idea. But it still looked like cohesive viscoelastic to me. Time to invest in a dispersive here. Buzz in with a phaco probe. Bring the nucleus half towards us. And there's a nice chop. Beautifully done. Now, this video was shot at a different facility than where I normally teach my residents. So my residents, through our UCLA training program, rotate through multiple different hospitals. My hospital, All of You UCLA Medical Center, is one of the large hospitals affiliated, but not the only. So this video was taken at a different facility and I'm not the attending surgeon here. I'm merely reviewing the video later. I can't tell you that this resident is doing a beautiful job, but I certainly look forward to working with this resident to get um, more hands-on time with me. Last little piece of the character being emulsified here. I do like that chopper position in the safe area to prevent the capsule from coming up. Last bit of that lens nucleus is being removed. That looks great. Good job here. Excellent. Again, remember, we're watching this video at three times the normal speed. The Normal video was 30 minutes. This sped up version is only 10 minutes. Going under the Rexus here now, taking the IA probe and removing all the lens cortex. That looks great. Going round and round here. Important to access the full 360 to get all the cortex out. That looks great. And in a case like this, I'd be cautious about doing too much capsular polishing, etc. This patient had a count fingers brunescent cataract to begin with. A little bit of residual cortex is okay, if it's just tiny fragments. Here is the, sp the split hand piece. This is that transformer hand piece for the IA that was used to get the subincisional uh, cortex out. Now it's been put back together. And a little bit more cleaning up of the capsule here. That looks great. Very thorough job here. Again, very nicely performed surgery. You can see there's that round capsule rexus, which looks good. This is probably a smaller than average eye, probably a lens power in the mid-20 range. You can tell it's a small white to white. There's the filling of the capsule bag with our viscoelastic, which looks great. Lens is going to be loaded up next. At our training facility, at our programs, we do like the residents and the doctors in training to load their own lenses. It's important that they know how to do that. Once they're in their own private practice or future job position, they can have the technician load the, the lens for them. But during these first few hundred cases of their training, I think it's important that they load their own lens. So here comes the lens, injector goes in the eye, single piece acrylic lens goes in the eye beautifully and then using that chopper to dial it into position and now you can see that lens has a six millimeter optic uh, edge to edge and so now this rexus looks to be about four and a half millimeters remember this lens in particular does have a six millimeter optic but the effective optical uh, size is a little bit smaller probably in the range of 5.2 or 5.4 millimeters because this lens has that dead zone around the edge 360. Finishing up the case here, a little bit of hydration of the main incision. I'd prefer a different style of hydration, but again, that's still done very well. So a lot to learn from this case. Thanks for watching.